Good evening and welcome to tonight's special edition of the Agri-Leader Circle, celebrating all things great British beef. We're dicing things up a bit tonight, bringing you live from the heart of the action of the Great British Beef Week. Join us on a culinary adventure and an agricultural wonders of all things beef production. I've got tonight um, some special guests, Martin Eccles, Master Butcher. I've got some top chefs in Ben Bartlett and uh, Neil Bishop, and of course, some of their regular faces that you'll recognize. Joe, tell us who you are, what you do. Uh, well, I'm Joe Seals, a beef and arable farmer from South Yorkshire, uh, but also do um, social media, TikTok and YouTube. And handle? Oh, just Joe Seals, simple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm James Herrick, um, I'm a beef and arable farmer from Leicestershire, and uh, I'm at Baldy's Farm on YouTube and Instagram. I'm Charlotte Ashley. I am currently beef and sheep in Cumbria and it's Charlotte Ashley Farm on everything. And I'm Rebecca Wilson, an imposter because I'm a sheep and arable farmer from Yorkshire um, and I'm on Instagram. My handle is Rebecca Wilson 722 And we're here sent live from Deerbrooks Farm. So thank you very much to Anna Bloomfield for hosting us. This event today was uh, curated by Carl Penderbury really to kick off uh, Great British Beef Week that starts next week on the 23rd on St George's Day uh, to showcase and to highlight all things that's good about St Great British Beef to the catering industry, to chefs, to the food industry professionals. Um, but as always, it's you guys at home that really brings it to life. So wherever you're watching it, where can they watch it, Joe? Um, well, on all of our handles, I think, but on the AHDB YouTube. YouTube, <laughs> yep. So whatever YouTube you want to watch on, you can watch it from there. You're so northern, Isaac. <laughs> YouTube. <sound> YouTube. <laughs> so, right, so grab a seat around the dinner table, get ready to tuck in to some sizzling conversations, some mouth-watering demonstrations, and all-round beefy goodness as we get stuck in. So tell us a bit about and what we saw today, what's and happened here today. You were here for the whole day. Joe, let's start with you again. Uh, so we kicked things off with a walk around Anna's farm here um, where they're doing pasture for life. So they're grazing cattle all year round and finishing them on grass. And I think that was nice to show the chefs and the food service industry and sort of connect the dots of, um, of what happens on farm really so that they can take it to the end user. What did you like about in the farm walk? Um, so I thought it was actually just really fascinating to see a different system, albeit yes we're sheep at home, but um, different kind of, different grazing system to some extent, but ultimately producing food, we're all still focused on the animal welfare elements, the sustainability elements, carbon, um, sequestration, etc. So yeah, a really interesting day. To, as Joe said, it's all about joining those dots which you don't always join until you get on a farm. Cool. First hand experience, I think, isn't it really? Yeah. Just got it back to refer back to. Makes it much easier for them to sell and on to you know, the customers that they work with, whoever that might be. Yeah, yeah exactly. They're the, middleman. they're the middleman, aren't they? So they, they're the guy in between the consumer and, and the farmer. <coughs> Charlotte, I'm uh, going to what, what did you enjoy? I enjoyed, actually, which was surprising for me because I can't concentrate um, at all, the information section, which was quite good. Uh, it was like forecasts for the future, what's going on, and beef's on the up, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, it was about the service industry and trends that things are following, what kind of foods are in and out, and I just I thought that was really interesting. I thought it was interesting. Vegan food is on the down. And beef was on the up. Yeah, excellent. That's fantastic. Good. No <laughs> good for <laughs> no good for us sheep people though, because yeah. sheep's on down. No, no, that was on down. <laughs> Next year sheep's going to be terrible, everyone. <laughs> what did you take away from that? Um, yeah, I just thought it was really interesting. Actually, I really liked the. Uh, I really enjoyed watching the guys cook. So we had the chefs here cooking, and it was great to see them utilise British beef and different cuts of beef that we perhaps predominantly don't cook at home and how to cook it and how to cook it well and it, it was really well put across. We got to see them do different ingredients, different ways of, of brining and rubs and, and I just thought it was really interesting to see that. Yeah, I, I'd echo that and, and kind of the prelude to that was the actual butchery part of part of the demonstration and I guess maybe we're underutilising cuts of meat by not looking forward and being innovative, innovative with how we're cutting them up and, and giving the consumer what they really want. So yeah, all around, just a really good day. Excellent. And it, well, it hasn't finished yet because we're obviously going to be the stars of the show now when we get cooking. <laughs> 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 right. <laughs> right, so talking about um, 
butchering, so we've got Martin Eccles. Um, I'll come and stand here with, with Martin. Yeah, Tell us a bit about yourself, Martin. Uh, so, hi, I'm uh, Martin Eccles. I'm the trade butchery manager at AHDB, and we're going to do a short demo. Um, we've got a, a whole rump, so a full rump of beef, so the, the rump coming from, uh, as it goes in, down the cell line into the animal, going up onto the, onto the hindquarter, so just where, where the tail sits, like that. Um, traditionally, rump would always be cut um, straight back, which is fine. We've, we've done that for years, but we can actually do better things with this. We, we can actually utilise this cut. Um, we, can, we can get some really, really nice cuts, some miniature cuts out of it. Um, and that's simply because by following uh, the seams, so or natural seam butchery is where we follow the natural seams. We separate the muscles down and we create some really, really great steaks. Did you guys learn anything new today about some butchering? Yeah, the different the different names of all these parts yeah. of the of the rump, which I mean, I assume maybe people at home probably hadn't hadn't no. heard of no, them. The, no. the, the what was so we have this one here, which, which, which yeah. was a picanha. Never heard of that. So uh, that's the cat muscle of South America. It's just a favourite. They would never, you know, that's what they would go for. Um, it has like a really nice covering of fat on it. The fat really enhances the flavour of the steak. It's just a beautiful piece of meat. We then, um, and we'll you show you last night, weren't you? That look like the fat is the bit that you <laughs> want to yeah, eat. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, <laughs> to, it's to die for. I know you shouldn't really promote eating the fat, but it's good it fat. Is, oh, it's, it's good fat. fat. <laughs> it, it, it's more than good fat. Fat is good. Yeah, 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 yeah. As long as you, I mean, you lubricate the. Arteries. You're all farmers. You're physical. You, you're going to be going out there. You're going to be <laughs> physically doing your work and stuff like that. There, so you're going to burn off. You can fat. eat it. You're not obese. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so do you want me to kick in and just, I'll just uh, do a short demo just to show how we got these things. Yeah, brilliant. Okay. So, like I said, this is, this is the whole rump, okay? There's, essentially, there's three muscles. There's two muscles here, and there's one muscle across the bottom. The grain in these two muscles runs this way, okay? The one in the, on the bottom, it, it runs the opposite way. So if we cut across all three, these two tend to eat really, really well, and the one at the bottom, not so much so, and it's simply because we cut it across the grain or cut it with the ground on that one, shall we say. So how do we get around that sort of problem? And, and that will affect in how we eat it. So yeah, it, it, it'll still be a, a really flavoursome piece of meat, uh, actually, but we're not really doing it justice. We can do it really, really enhance that eating experience of, of the con and, the, and the end consumer. And it's a, it's a simple process. So we separate this cat muscle off, and it's just, it's just a simple seam that we go through, come down to the fat, and then we move it there. What we exposed underneath here is we've got like some connective tissues and we've got some silver skin, which is like, you know, like the, the gristles, shall we say. We can also trim down any excessive fat. So we'll take it down there, took the fat away, put my knife underneath, just gently open up that silver skin. And then what I'm gonna do is just gently follow that seam underneath. My kitchen knife could not do that. No, mine couldn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that that is no, he's very, you know, he's yeah. done this a lot of time, but I'm a bit worried about these knives. I like yeah, yeah, don't, don't worry, don't worry uh, Isaac. I haven't cut anybody yet. <laughs> All right. Then. There's always a first. He right. says this with metal gloves. Yeah, I'm just about to point yeah. that out. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what we've done is we've we've removed that that silver skin which is on the back there and the, and the membrane. We turn it over. It's got a nice amount of fat on that there. And then what we can do is, like I said, normally we would have cut it that way. We turn it round and we're going to cut it this So way. what makes the fat that you've taken off like less edible than the fat that you're leaving on? <coughs> you've got three, essentially you've got three types of fat on an animal. So the external fat is, is what called subcutaneous fat. You have internal fat which sits around the, the kidneys and around the internal organs. And then you have intramuscular fat which is your marbling which we see in a, in a ribeye steak or yep. in, a, in a sirloin steak. The subcutaneous fat on the outside there, really, really flavoursome. Um, different aspects, different fats have different flavours. For me, this is the one. Yeah. This is this is a key for this one. I, I do like this one. It, it's it's the one that I would go for. Um, and the simple salt pepper and just. But I guess for consumers who aren't as keen on eating fat, you still get the, this one here, and you can kind of cater for everything, can't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, and, and the beauty of this is, if you got that, you could always cut the fat off it. You could just leave, leave the fat and then... And can you walk into the butchers and buy them like this or do they come as a, will they just, do you have to ask various, for this? Various butchers will go in and they might have a, a different name for it. They might call it rump cap, um, which essentially is what it is. It's just, can you sound a little bit sexier, it's a bit of a nicer way of uh, outlining the, the description. Um, so we've got that there, we've got the, like I said, the pecanio steaks. 
So we move back onto the, the main heart of, of, of the rump, if you will. Um, and like I said before, we've got two muscles that sit on here. Running down the middle, there's a silver connective tissue that runs down through the middle. So what I want to do is just bring my knife in and then I'm going to simply follow this silver skin. I need some new knives. Uh, which goes along <laughs> like that. When I do it, I do tend to, rather than cutting straight, I will have my, my knife at a little bit of an angle, so I've got a little bit more control over it. And then I can just simply follow that through. And I will show this when we get through there. So you can see we've exposed that silver crystal on, on there. So again, that could be something that may lead to a slightly negative eating experience. The beauty of doing it this way is we can remove it. So I put my knife in, lift, and then gently follow it along. So I'm going to remove that silver skin. Okay? So that's it makes got it sound so easy, doesn't it? Mm. It does. Yeah. It does. It makes it look easy as well. <laughs> yeah, it is an art. It's a skill. It, it, is, it is. I've been doing it for years. A couple of things that really help with this when I'm doing it. When I want to cut portion steaks now, it's, it's a nice uniform shape, so I can actually cut a nice steak. So get a, a generally a, a thicker steak uh, for my portion size. So we're going to cut through some nice prime rump steaks, which come like that there. It would be highly unusual for me to buy a joint of meat like that and not cook it as a whole thing. Price-wise, which is, like, I know you've separated this, are they all much of a muchness price-wise, or are there some cheaper cuts that say you couldn't afford the... We, obviously, different butchery methods have removed some some waste and stuff like that, so it will have uh, an increase on the cost because we would expect it's more work. The beauty of it is, it, it, when you, you've got to think about values in a couple of ways. If I have now bought that steak, I've taken the gristles away, so I eat 100% of that steak. In fact, sometimes, if I bought something that was a bit cheaper and I didn't eat all of it, which is better value? Yeah. Um, <coughs> so there's a couple of ways of looking at it, really. But at the end of the day, if you get a really good steak like that, You've paid a little bit more for it, you've had a really good eating experience out of it, that's good value for money. Mm. I guess you if you're know, a farmer yeah. doing a box beef type thing, you're adding value yeah. to the carcass, aren't you? Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's a yeah. win, you win. Know, we've, and we've looked at different cuts today, we've looked about carcass balance, how we've utilised cuts out of the shoulder. The uh, the remaining muscle is, uh, like I said, was, was like I call, we call like a bistro muscle. There's a little bit of connective tissue on the back, a little bit of membrane. Gently lift your knife across, I'm going to remove that. Take any excess away from there. Trim it down that side there. I suppose Let's trimming these bits out will make it more of a consistent product. Because yeah. like if some people get put off by beef because they have a bad experience with it. And yeah. then or they find it hard to cook. Mm. Yeah. 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 And, and I say, I, because we can make it down to smaller steaks, we can get a little bit of a thickness. When you want to cook a steak, medium, medium rare, things like that. But when it's a thicker steak, it's, it gives you that ability to do that. So it, 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 you have a better eating experience. It is plus all, plus, plus, plus all the way we're doing it. Taking this off here, now we're going to cut some beautiful um, bistro rump steaks. So I just cut a couple there because we've got a little bit for time. So again, look at them there, highly trimmed, beautiful steaks. So we have the bistro, the bistro rump steaks, which is like, like this there. We have the prime rump steaks, and then we have the picanias. Fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a breed that you would prefer? <laughs> I would go more personally from, because I'm a butcher, I'm a not lazy butcher, but like that, yep. I would like more consistency. Right. Consistency would be my key thing to go, yes, I have my particular breed, which I like to mm. you work with, I like real different, but um, I'm not going to start naming a breed, because mm. it's always like, oh, I need to see this breed, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> it's more about consistency for me. Right, okay. If we get a con really consistent product, it just helps everything along the line. Okay. You said you, you're working for AHDB, what kind of stuff do you do for them, guys, and why would AHDB employ a butcher? <laughs> um, so, I, so I actually work within the export team, mm -hmm. so we do, um, we, we will do trade shows, we'll go out and we will um, just give the benefits to the people on the continent, why should they buy British beef, things like that, because it is so much better. And what kind of trade shows, where do you go for those? We've, uh, we can go all over, um, we've recently just done the RC show in Toronto, which was a really good show, that was like, uh, specifically about food service. We are going to FHA, which is in Singapore. Again, that's more looking at um, more like the pork, and there is a bit of the beef and lamb going out there, but that's more specific that. Later on in the year, we have the, the big big show, which is Seattle in Paris, again, about uh, our closest. And telling people around the world about some yeah, great Just singing, singing the, the, you know, the benefits of 
why should I eat British beef? It's just so much better than everybody else. But I would say that, but I have to be very <laughs> diplomatic or I'll be getting myself in trouble and uh, you won't be seeing me again. <laughs> Excellent, you've got a fair few sharp knives there to protect yourself, but it's yeah. brilliant, thank yeah. you very well, much. Yeah. Thank you, <laughs> cheers. Guys, why are things like this here, the day we've had today and, and St Martin showcase um, all of that, so why, why do you think that's important? Uh, for me, it actually gives, gives me faith that we're putting our all in to producing this consistent product, and to know that there's, there's people like Martin out there putting their all into cutting up the product to show it in its best light, and then tying it all in with a chef who's cooking it to the best of their ability. It just shows that everybody in the stage stages of this process are all about celebrating and promoting the reputation of, of, and sometimes we think we're on our own as farmers, oh, nobody else cares. But clearly after today, you can see that people care very much. It's following a chain through, isn't it, to the end? That is the end product. So it starts with me, or, you know, for you, yeah. and, you know, we, we'll, we'll carve a cow. And you see, you know, you nurture this calf and then to watch it go all the way through, through Joe. And then, you know, it's eating what Rebecca's producing. It's just, it's interesting to see the whole process right the way through. I think as well today, obviously we had people from every stage of the industry and it, it almost builds that respect because they come and they see the, what the farmer's doing and they can then respect what we're getting up to and so on and so forth. We can we see and speak them. to them and then yeah. respect yeah. for them Me as and well. Joe and it brings were, that mutual yeah. trust together. We were talking to someone trying to explain something, weren't we? And we used very much we explained what I did and then we said but then Joe's the next stage in the game and we used each other as a this is we explained the situation using ourselves which is quite an interesting thing to be able to do and I suppose mm -hmm. if you didn't come somewhere like this you wouldn't necessarily meet two farmers from differing ends of the spectrum. Yeah I, I chatted to a couple of lads that were into NPD and I said I had to ask what that is new product development and they were here so looking at those different kinds of cuts so they work for a big source and uh, uh, you know plant and so selling to various different supermarkets so you know, and for them to be here and, and see different ways of cutting it and rather than some traditional so I guess all of those new types of things is important. All them new ter them terms are like terrible aren't they? It's like <laughs> I, was I was telling somebody the other day that I'm drilling like what, what, what's that and then you have to go through and it's yeah. just like yeah, yeah but it goes back to you it. think that you're the you think you're normal don't you and everyone knows what you're talking about and they don't <laughs> Obviously, I never think I'm normal, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I like to see that you've changed your hat. So, if you earlier, Charlotte had a very a bright pink colour. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right, so we've got a bit of a surprise. Um, so, we've seen, you know, it, well, we s earlier today saw how it's been grown, seen how it's been cut up. We've had some. Um, uh, cooking demonstrations today, so we're going to send test your homework and see how you guys what you've learned for cooking wise. So um, oh, I'm going to get uh, Neil and Ben to send bring on some ingredients oh, and talk well. you through that bit. Oh, oh, oh really? we just chucked something on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> right, oh, so, so we're going to divide you into a couple of teams. So if you guys okay. come around come here, on, Jay, let's go on the winning side. <laughs> oh no, I want to be the red team. And oh, so how are we going to judge this, <laughs> Ben? So how are we going to? Um, well, we've got a mystery box of ingredients. Mystery. And the guys can choose any of the steaks to cook. But first of all, we've got to put the uh, proper. Wow. Chef outfits <laughs> on. Absolutely they are. Yeah. And yeah. Just as while well, we're busy Sorry. with this, remember, Sorry, and if you've got any questions, any comments, Super. put it on the various different uh, social platforms. I'll get that fed oh, in. Yes. And there's been monitor. Ooh, Mark is going to shout it in. So uh, if you're watching from home, put those in there and we'll sort of get it asked from either the chefs, right, now there's the a butcher, or the, the farmers. How about it's going to fit on <laughs> you know how it's gonna fit. Yeah, where <laughs> oh well, it's just depends where you. Some of us aren't skinny enough for that, Jack. Oh, oh, well, you suit I it. They can't yeah. suit it. That's Please. really unfair. Get set and cook. Wow. So it says on the hat. <laughs> I mean, this is um, not attractive. The guys look fantastic. I wonder what you guys. <laughs> yeah. You've got a harder job with these. Why are you changing the, the boards? Yeah, there? this isn't fair. I've well, got a big head. And we're keeping like it, oh God, you know, in proper food <laughs> service, thought? you'd have red for raw meats mm -hmm. and green for vegetables. So it, it goes well with the colour coordination. I've got a nice box of ingredients here. Um, just to go through, it's British okay. asparagus. Um, really nice, lovely, just st starting asparagus. off the season. Uh, you've got courgette, 
green pepper, mm -hmm. some lovely vine tomatoes, Just eat them. some big flat mushrooms, and some and some <laughs> wild mushrooms as well. <laughs> what do you think, chef? Well, I think I must be missing the asparagus because I've got potatoes and uh, peppers and. I've got uh, field mushrooms. Tough oh, age, yeah. Never mind. That's well, a bit anyway. of a disadvantage well, there. With tell you what, should we do a trade? <coughs> no, it's all I'll, right. I'll <laughs> let you have a few of the asparagus if we can have some potatoes. No. Oh. Oh. Really oh. Are you yeah. joking? They're already yeah, cooked. Cool. Cool. Give them one. We'll have all their potatoes. You can have one asparagus. Potatoes. Potatoes. We're on the yeah, you side. may have <laughs> one. I hope you're artistic. I'll pass the potatoes over in a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on. Come on. We'll just take the best ones and. <laughs> the right size and then pass. The right pass size potato. Over. So guys, you've got about 15 minutes to create a lovely dish um, using the British beef. You can you choose now whichever steaks you'd like to use. Don't forget to marinate them, give them lots of flavour, lots of vegetables here. So try and use everything. You want lots of colour. A bit later on, uh, we'll be judging you on taste, texture and appearance. So keep that in your mind as you're cooking. So shall we kick off? Oh, well, sure. So just to make clear, these guys have, haven't seen these products before, so nope. um, have a, a minute or so a few seconds to think about it. Oh, uh, is that what we're making? Which, um, <laughs> steak you're going to choose, and you know, so what you're going to do. We'll so your maybe a couple of, yeah. couple of yeah. minutes to chat amongst yourselves. It's worth pointing out as well, like, these are the Excuse brilliant me. chefs that we had here today Excuse that have been... You know, they, they were the ones that cooked for us today, so yeah. top chef. Yeah. Excellent, very well made uh, point there. Thanks, James. I just want to know where the air fryer is. <laughs> 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 so that's all I took. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. Come on, then, Jay. Right, come, oh, on, right, come, come on, come on. Come on. So, so which meat do you want to choose? Oh, well, I think we should just take all of them and then we do not worry about it afterwards. Okay. The canyon. The canyon. I don't know if we should go for the canyon. Go on, then. Should we take all of them? Yeah. Okay. And then we can... You're not going to choose them. Are we going to choose them? Yes. Oh, uh, do you think I we want to those put ones. Them on now? I reckon you can, you can share No, we want the middle ones. They look <laughs> way better. Oh, come on. No, you're gonna, but don't we want some Come on, we'll, we'll pick the best ones. Know. Come on, Ben. Which is the best ones? Oh, that one and that. They're the middle all, ones, I reckon. Because they're on, expertly the butchered. They're we'll all cut to eat. They look nice. Of course. They look prettier. Yeah. We're being judged on artistic merit here. That's my only input. <laughs> Do you know, okay. I'd grab one of these. I think that's enough for the time. So shall we start well. the vlog? Yeah. I like the look of this no. one. So We've got nice. the side in. Okay, what, what are you thinking? So 6.53. Right, ready, oh, steady, okay. good. On top of the stage. We, we can sort of like take those. We'll get some of these bad boys. Trademark on that. Are they cut up? Sparky rub. Should we rub? What, do all of them or just... Yeah, I do too. Can you get on the phone to our lawyers, please? Yeah. Wow. Which, which, which yeah, yeah. one of these can you use natural? Okay. Um, yeah, we can do this. Yeah. Just said it's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we just get that straight on. So, so which which steak have you chosen? So we've gone. Uh, we've had two of the canyon steaks, the and then we've yeah. had one of the rump. Do you, you like do traditional? Are, are they allowed to do that? Like, yes. Allowed to do what? Yeah. Choose more than one steak. Oh, we can have as many steaks as we want. Okay. So what, so what, talk me through. Why did you choose those steaks? Um, the canyon is something a bit different. Um, it's not something we've cooked with before, so we thought we'll have it. You know, we'll have that. And as we've seen, it's like an added value sort of steak. It's something that's. Widely regarded, as you know, you've so been in South America. Put the rub on. Oh, oh yeah, sorry, I'm supposed to be. Oh, oh, yeah. Is that enough rub? Is that enough rub? And then the traditional rub steak as well, which we're just thinking. So, Joe, you've just put the barbecue sauce on there. Why have you done that? Why didn't you not put it on there? We we heard earlier that you need to warm up your barbecue sauce before you marinate. And the rump so steak as well. Following the uh, good tip. Early 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 good tip, good yeah, tip. Just coating all the edges. Oh. Red teams, and which, which nice steaks have you chosen? Salts and um, sugars. These ones, the <laughs> bis bistro. Bistro. Bistro yeah, steaks. Um, we're going for a really kind of, it's going to look gourmet, it's going to look neat, it's going to look tidy. Oh, you are good, Rebecca. Um, and oh, do we tell you what we've decided? Yeah, you can. Obviously, Charlotte and I were the main inspiration behind right. this. Um, we are going uh, to I am just choosing the best looking potatoes. Thank you. So, char grill some of these vegetables. Um, maybe, you know, a little right, I've got the most even potatoes. Get steak on there. 
to some kind of like char hide, grilled, hide them potatoes. Um, <laughs> char grilled they potatoes. Don't need them. Hide them. Asparagus. <laughs> no, they it's don't. Be gourmet. That, it sounds so. Presentation. I reckon high marks for presentation. Yeah. Charlotte's yeah, got yeah, a very yeah, yeah, yeah. Streak. That's all I'm contributing towards this. <laughs> so Rebecca's going to do the first ten minutes. You're going to do the last. Oh, you haven't seen me cooking. <laughs> so we've got colour and everything going through it as well. Snaps in the right place for you. You don't need there's, a knife. There's some potatoes and Nick from over there. If you, oh, if you thank you. Them. Thank right, you very much. The thing got asparagus on them. It's a this fair. Is snap, yeah. You snap it's the ends chunky, off. It's chunky, isn't it? In the and it and it should snap off. With it, Ben, do you reckon right we should like cut these in a half or no, I keep, keep them, them whole? whole? Yeah, keep keep it really yeah. chunky. With I'll put these on. Vegetables. You, know? you want good chunky items. So right. Yeah, keep them whole. What about you can cut up? The peppers a bit. The Into the big mushrooms. chunks, squares, cubes, like dice or um, chunks. Yeah, chunks. or big, big squares. Right. You've got a nice cool chef as well, round. and uh, got some lovely wild mushrooms here. So yeah, use them all and the potatoes. You can. Oh yeah, the potatoes yeah, are a good idea. So you reckon chunk, chunk like that sort of chunky? A, a little less, but yeah. yeah, that's that sort of chunkiness. I'd like to say that when. Um, Ben was chopping this earlier, he was doing it a lot quicker than me. No, that's, you're doing well. Into precision. Right, right, we've got a question. Mark, shout right, the question sorry, out, please. Guys. Am I cutting all this up? What do you believe sets British beef apart from other sources? So we've got a question from Edith on Rebecca's. Uh, th what 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 puts British beef apart, and ha what makes it better than than the rest, Rebecca? Um, what puts puts British beef above the rest? Yep. What sets it apart? Okay, I think that's a, on I think that's a good question yeah. because some of us actually went with AHDB ab abroad to Anuga to see what other countries were offering, and it is an eye opener that we do definitely have competition. You know, we're we're leading, but there's definitely people who are who were up there in other countries but I think we have we have the climate to grow grass don't we here like almost like no other country and I think the grass-fed beef as as we heard today has so many nutritional benefits um you're kind of increasing biodiversity by the way that cattle are grazed in in this system um I think we also have very very good animal welfare targets has, has something gone wrong no Joe's just sprayed me with apple juice no. <laughs> <laughs> now stop it now come on <laughs> um, yeah, did that answer the question? I'm, uh, I'm concentrating it, on my there's mushrooms. There's part of the idea is to put you off a bit. So, oh. so is the whole biodiversity really well some grown beef? What else did you learn in Anuga? Shall I go? St James was over there. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yes. yeah. Go and distract him I'll from his cooking. Of it, so. James and Joe. So we've just heard that you guys were in Anuga. So, so the question that came yes. in was oh, yeah, about yeah. Um, you know what sets British beef apart. Rebecca just said, you know, uh, you've definitely got some competition, but what else did you learn in Anuga, um, you know, some about and what, what's out there in the world of beef? I mean, I there's lots of countries that are selling beef. And yeah, and in a big way. Mass, uh, and, com and competitive and doing a similar product, but we need to sell, like, our unique things about, you know, Ooh. our welfare standards and things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I think that was the thing when we went to Anuga is, there was there was some incredible countries doing some amazing things and and arguably as good as what we are you know we always say that we are the best but there is people that are up there with us and um that was quite eye-opening for us i think for all of us but we are still by everyone else held on this pedestal like british beef is is held above everybody else despite in some cases just being on a level playing field with a lot of people so i think it's really important that we almost play to that and we utilize that name that we've got for ourselves there's a lot of noise going on behind me i'm just like I'm getting worried. I'm, I'm glad I'm standing far from the fire there. So, so you know, it's keeping us. That, so we've got a good reputation. Yeah. So it's keeping Sorry, that reputation. What do you think has uh, <laughs> created that reputation for us? Uh, I just think it's something we've had for a long time. You know, and I think we, because we've always had a, a good quality product, we've always been up there on animal welfare, and I think all of that stuff has is shown throughout other countries, and other countries have followed suit, and they might be coming up behind us. But we have always been at the vanguard, at the front line of it, and they've, and they've always looked up to us as somebody who's doing the best job. For me, it's about things like the carbon footprint. Why do you buy meat that's travelled halfway around the world when you can buy it locally and it's fresh? Yeah. You know, as a chef, for me, British beef has the best taste. That's what, it's a real premium. 
And do you think is that, you know, so not all uh, is grass fed, but do you think a big part of it is, is grass based diets? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, two thirds of Britain is grass and it's perfect for our cattle and it just gives that extra flavour that you want when you're yeah. tasting great British beef. Excellent. Right, I'm going to send the, ask the other yeah, chef as well. So, Neil, so what puts British beef apart from the field? They're like field mushrooms. They look nice, actually. actually the best. Quite keen on those. It's, 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 it's local. Could you literally get local to everywhere that you are. It's across the nation. Um, there's different varieties. There's so many different varieties across the country. Um, why would we need to buy abroad? We do it well ourselves. Let's stick to British. It's local, you've not got air miles, you've not got distance going on. It's better for the environment. It's a win or win situation. Excellent, excellent. I'm going to have a quick look here at what um, is happening here with this Charlotte. Neat and organised. Less on fire than <laughs> Joe's is. <laughs> I'd say controlled. Controlled. Controlled chaos <laughs> as compared to uncontrolled chaos. Yes, so like I, I just feel like. Like, I can feel it on my fingers. I hate to think what it's doing to his mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Remember, if you are oh, watching, listening in, send in your questions, whether that is related to um, the butchering of it, the cooking of it, anywhere in the supply chain. Charlotte, and I'm going to come to you next. You said you really, you really um, found the bit about some information and you know, market information useful. Talk and, th and cook at the same time. <laughs> this is the whole idea. Is it? <laughs> Have you not seen? I'm, I'm, you know, so Have Martin you met me? Keith, Keith Floyd. Who? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what bit about some the, the market information do you think so you can use on farm? Um, I know that lamb <laughs> lamb's going down next year, so I'll probably cut back. <laughs> no, it's a good thing to know, isn't it? Um, yeah, beef beef seemed to be on the up. It was just good to look at people's like trends of what they're going to be eating and you know sort of I don't know whether you'd necessarily tweak what kind of farming you're doing or what kind of animals you're rearing necessarily but it's always good to be prepared isn't it with any information that well, I guess there is. you can sort of you know, tweak it you might not change your whole system yeah but you might be able to tweak it a bit it's also nice to know that there is resources available to be able to go to and you know on the internet to be able to look at these things I didn't realize there was quite so much information out there which is nice to know Excellent. Mm. I'm going to bother uh, Rebecca. You've had that some problem before, haven't you? Yeah. Market <laughs> information, so did you find that bit so interesting today? Yeah, definitely. And I think we probably underestimate the amount of information that's, you know, being gathered in the background and we're not yet necessarily using it on our on our farms or in our in our decision making yes maybe we don't necessarily need to know that more burgers are being eaten to decide what we're doing on farm but there's so much behind the decision making isn't there and actually that's informed a lot of people today on maybe what the trends are what's coming up what do consumers want when they go out oh my god chaos <laughs> Don't burn us! From my onion. With your... It was a fire. Put the fire out. Yeah. Spray it. Spray it. Spray it. Whose idea was this? It's all under control, folks. Maybe patch the building. Maybe pull the wood off now. Oh yeah, maybe pull the wood off, Joe. You can pull the wood I'll pull the wood off. You can be the wood puller off. There you go. That's what she said. To the flex. Maybe we should... Maybe I didn't do a very good enough job of soaking that bit of wood. When, when oh Ben Jesus. put his wood on there, like there was no fire, was there? I don't know, was it? No. No. Right. Come on, mop it, mop it. Uh, what do you think? So how does, think? How's this looking? I think we need, yeah, it's all I think need to source it, Joe. They're quite different in style. Um, the, the red team have cooked everything, literally everything on there. Yeah, <laughs> but that's good. Garlic, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be very close, but we're seeing some good, good char grilling. Yeah, okay. it's not burnt. Good it's char it's it's char, char it's char grill. Yeah, you keep telling yourself. I'm not sure you're watching the same thing. The uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a fire grill. Oh, 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 oh the, that one's on fire. You're touching my face. It's literally, it's not putting it out. You're, pu you're coming over half, uh, over half. We're going to have to draw a line. <laughs> yeah. You know, like on the bed. 
So just pull the stakes <laughs> no, no. off for a minute. You know those things that you think yeah. you don't say? <laughs> Put them on here. Yep. Get that one because some flames on there. Yeah, that's... Uh, what is fire right out? Yeah, it was on fire itself. <laughs> Oh God. <laughs> so from Robin, Rob Higgins, uh, watching on Joe Seals, Food Miles. What do we think about Food Miles? As, a sh as chefs, is that something you would consider? You oh, talked about that a little bit. Absolutely, very important. Yeah. Like on the menu. So yeah. So um, <laughs> at my restaurant, the that uh, one doesn't look cooked. The Sunday meats, no, not on the roasts on a Sunday lunch. Um, <laughs> the beef <laughs> I use is all local. Yeah. I use a good butcher that's local. Um, that we have that beef that yeah, no, is that um, in the fields as you drive in and out of the village. So you can see that, and as much as possible, we try and use that beef so that you know it, it is local. It's it's right on your doorstep. Why, why go further afield? We've got excellent product on the doorstep. Let's, let's use it. Let's use what we've got locally. So, very important. <laughs> what have you done, girls? Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. Just keep going. I'm not worried. Charlotte, how do you feel about this? How do you feel? I just hope Roy's not watching because he'll be expecting quite a lot from me from now on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excelling. <laughs> Roy is chasing sheep and we've heard earlier. Oh, he is. You're safe. Bless him. So you've been warming up the Ooh, barbecue sauce. Good. Really important to serve it hot or, or warm. You wouldn't go to a nice steakhouse and order a steak Diane and if the sauce came out cold, you'd send it back. The same principle yeah. with your barbecuing, warm up that sauce, turn it into a hot glaze and then keep brushing it during the final few minutes of cooking and it just adds an extra layer of flavour. What you were saying as well, when we were doing the, when we were doing the demonstration, don't turn the, steak, don't turn the steaks too much, is that right? That's right, yeah. yeah. Just a minute or two on each side, but with a steak, treat it like a cube. So you want to seal off all the edges. Right. All the bacteria is on yeah. the outside, I so the providing you've sealed the outside, totally safe, you know, oh, everyone's happy, and you can oh, cook oh, it oh, rare. Seals by name, seals by nature, Joe. Are you being sabotaged there, Charlotte? He's knocking my steak over. So you've got about two about? minutes left. Oh, yeah. Two, oh minutes. Two, yeah. minutes. Two, two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes oh, until perfect. everything, and yeah. uh, um, to have everything like on its plate. Yeah. Yes. Like what? Yeah. What is this? Does anything oh, else need this? No. Don't overdo it. Do don't overdo it. Don't overdo it. Do they need some? Ben. Ben's the expert. Ben's like master chef. Yeah, go for it. Knock them over. Which way? So we're going to overdo the barbecue sauce. Well, for me, you can never have enough barbecue sauce. Okay, we'll just so pour it on when we're done. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that always gets bonus points. Oh, well, if you're judging. Nearly swore then. <laughs> that was really hot. So especially if you it's know, barbecue well. Ben. Barbecue oh, of course, people. Yeah. And Barbecue yeah. Ben's oh. Barbecue Rub. <laughs> <laughs> so, make sure you buy it. Shameless promotion. <laughs> They're going home with a boot full of... Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I also right, barbecue so ben. shall we start... <laughs> <laughs> shall we start counting down on the plate? Oh, no, up? please don't. Yeah, so, uh, a couple more minutes and then you've well got you've to be plated up. Behind. Oh, well, uh, no, never no, leave no, a man behind. No, We've got him. Right. Uh, and what are they being judged on again, Ben? I think we should put like the pecan, one steak on there, the big one, and the two pecanias on there. Texture and appearance. Yeah, yeah. Have you got that, Joe? Or maybe we should put these. Texture and appearance. These two and this. I'm just trying on the the Joe, or maybe we should put these. Texture and appearance. These two and this. I'm just trying on the. What about this thing, bad boy? Just going to start serving up two pecanias. Should we cut one? Ninety seconds left. Ninety seconds left. Oh, what you mean like cut it? So we got one pecania. If it's should we thing. should oh we lost the boards and no, stuff. They've took the knives off us, that's a no surprise, is it? Oh god, are we Do you reckon like layer Do we not need the steak oh. first? Oh. Right. Mushroom stack. So we can that's slice the steak. Yes, okay. Rebecca can slice steak and I'll make a stack. Yeah, we've lost all that yeah. off the yeah. circle. So you're oh, creating yes. oh, I forgot about the okay. asparagus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> mushroom. Yeah, you need one. Just one mushroom. Oh, I don't like that look of that. Let's get rid of that. Do I need a new board? Oh no, we haven't been on. Smells so mushroomy. Uh, that's my 
straight into the mouth. Yeah. Red is raw. That one Do is I use a big knife? Yeah. Oh, okay. Not right, let that's me nice choose cake. my best potato. Hold on. We only need <laughs> one. He's not showing it's about to the best of his ability. Three? <laughs> three? Uh, she's the arty one. That's it, that's it. Yeah, and again. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh, come on, Joe. Oh, face. No. Uh, thank you. I reckon that left back. So you don't uh, want to, you don't yeah, I don't want to just a fact. Oh. No, that's a good idea. I was ruining my um, <laughs> <laughs> my aesthetic here. Well, that's not what I was going well, you're for. You're a judge, uh, oh, Neil. Look at that. Oh, like this. Oh, oh so we want that one, oh, obviously. Oh, we, got we only want that bit of it. There is other state. Yeah, we can get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Bit. Get rid of the yeah. asparagus for now. Uh, no, not too much advice. Get rid of that for now. Oh no, it can't go on there. Yeah, it can. It can. Oh. So you've got about thirty seconds left. Thirty seconds, right? Yeah. I mean, there's that one. If we turn the burnt bit upside down, no one will know it's there. Perfect. Oh, oh, that's beautiful. Oh. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah but we've got a bit of judged. red. Right, okay. right. 20 so seconds. That one's lovely. Doing? You know, this chef thing's harder than it looks, like isn't straight. it? Yeah. It yeah. is to make it look yeah. nice, isn't like it? Oh, there's one of our things. Yeah. Yeah. It's gone rogue. Okay. Just you wait. Oh, okay. um, right, I need that a, one's Has anyone got a syringe? Yeah. You are so good. You are so good. Okay. Are you ready? Quick, do the steak. Do the steak. Do the steak. Oh Jesus! Oh Jesus! Seven, six, pull a sprig off. Five, four, three, two, one. Stop cooking. Oh, I touched you. Stop cooking. You put it on my. Yeah, because that's what you do. Oh, do you? What's going on here? Like that's got to be. You've got to take points for that. Well done, everyone. Shall we uh, get the stuff off the barbecue? I'm gonna put oh, yeah, maybe, yeah. Else might, uh, um, set fire to. Ooh, that's hot. I know, I'm going to do a drizzle. I am going to do a drizzle. I'm going to do a drizzle. So, shall we get the two chefs? Let's have a look at your dish. Oh, that's hot. Hot. That's enough. Ladies. Hold on, I've not done, I've not done. We love... It's all about the artistry. We look, we right. love this. You'd employ Step me after this. From the plate. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uses his fingers like. Yeah, like no, 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 show that to the people at home. Neil on the side. He does burgery because he's got no fingerprint. Uh huh. Uh huh. I do like that. Just medium rare. Mm -hmm. Lovely presentation. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent. Good range of colours. They've used a lot of ingredients. We've got a bit left over, but. Never mind. I, I like the really height and the yeah, colours. Yeah. So yeah, it's very good. Thank, good. You, thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a look at the boys. So, bit we strange cooked. that you didn't comment on our three dots of barbecue. Meals. Yeah, that obviously anyway. made all the difference. <laughs> We've cooked enough for the whole family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so big family they can tear it with yeah. their teeth. Yeah, very nice. Um, <laughs> like carnivores. Uh, colour again. Yeah. And the. The steak, let's have a look. Look at the presentation oh, yes. on oh, the beautiful, hey, medium wow. rare. The juices. The lovely British asparagus. Burnt. Mm. Nice <laughs> Char. kebabs. Burnt. It looks like a twig. <laughs> no commentary <laughs> from the side. <laughs> Charring. <laughs> looks well, like a twig. Did you like the barbecue sauce? It would be look at that, do you see him rip mm. that off then? It's down to the taste. What do you think, Chef? Well, ours tastes great. Uh, knife <laughs> and fork, please. This is a good establishment on this side. <laughs> <laughs> That has been very nice. Mm. Good I don't like that noise he made. Yeah, I like that noise. But I mean, we used barbecue Ben's barbecue rub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> other other uh, rubs are available as well. From barbecue Ben. <laughs> <laughs> the texture is 10 out of 10. Mm. The taste is 10 out of 10 on that. Yeah. No so one goes to a restaurant with the taste. Very room. close. <laughs> a bit, well, bit controlled on the uh, barbecuing. It's not all no. dark. <laughs> char char That's the rub. Less char grilled. <laughs> I think we're just about there. With the right, have you got a, mm, a winner? <laughs> Winners? Yep. 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 We're in agreement. The winners are the red No, yours! Yeah. <laughs> well done, ladies. Well done. Anymore. It's not oh. worth the money. <laughs> barbecue oh, Ben's barbecue get. rub. And our runners up. The green oh, team. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much, you. our two chefs. Thank you for joining. Thank you back. And um, well done, guys. Thank oh, you. I'm going to have to get barbecue out Thank now. Thank you, Thank you, Ben. Right. You're welcome. Let's talk a bit more about and what, what do we have today? Thank you. Yeah, can we eat it? Can we just we're eat coming it? In, we're coming just, in. Just grab a bit. How does that feel? Pass us a bit.
<laughs> Cheers. That's the end of it. So That'll do. The winners of the beach. Charlotte, I've got a question. <laughs> <laughs> Carry on. We've got, a t we've got to taste what we've, we've got just cooked. Fair enough, fair enough. I'm going to wait until you've got a mouthful. It looks chewy. It looks chewy for me. Delicious. We're talking about, some, about more about some that connection between, um, you know, the, what you do on farm, send through to the butcher, through through the whole of the supply chain, and eating quality. So, you know, so how do you think, you know, so you can make sure that what you've done on the farm, all the hard work that you've put in, so gets done justice by the time people send... You know, so cook that that uh, joint, that steak, those kind of things. I think it's good how uh, it's going to sound like I'm singing like the HDB's praises here, but like how you guys can translate like the language of what we do to the chef and catering industry. Because I know we do our bits on on YouTube and, and TikTok, but like you're pushing it out to actually the. I think on the same thread as YouTube and TikTok and, and in general social media, I think as we like to go out there and promote British farming, there are some really good pages that promote being a chef and cooking in general. And I, even I follow some to be like, ov obviously everyone does, don't they? And there's, it doesn't have to be complicated. It can be quick and easy. And there's a lot of good people out there. If you just go and look, there is quite a lot of decent creators out there, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Oh and, yeah. I, and I think having that, that confidence to, to pick out that recipe and just because you might like one element of the flavours in it, pick out that recipe, follow it, source some good products and obviously try and buy British or local or whatever you can. Um, and yeah, just have the confidence to cook that recipe and follow it through. And again, as, not to sing every praise of the AHDB, but there are recipe cards created and things like that, which you can just access online. Um, and it is really helpful to give you that kickstart and actually sometimes you need some inspiration because if you've had a long day at work and you're thinking, oh my gosh, what on earth am I going to cook? Sometimes you just need that. that really did only idea. take 15 minutes though. Yeah, I think yeah. it's surprising you know, how easy it is. I think a lot of people think, oh, if we're going to cook at home, it's going to be like a two hour ordeal. And like you say, it took 15 minutes to burn that piece of beef. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we can Char all grill it. it. Char grill it, come on. <laughs> do, do you cook a lot of steak at home? Is it something you do oh. quite a lot? Yeah, uh, to be fair, we watch it. We are I'm very, and I, I need to emphasize, we are very fortunate to be able to butcher our own. And I know that is not an ordinary thing to be able to do. So therefore we end up with a lot of meat. And sometimes when you end up butchering your own, I'm not going to a, a, a master butcher, for instance, to, to cut a beast up for me. I'm going to someone who does it quite basic, which is not necessarily easy for someone like me who doesn't have a knowledge. And that's why coming to something like this, um, it's really interesting to so watch you'll someone go back do it and well. Ask for something else? No, I'll go back and I think instead of throwing that steak that's this big on the top of the oven, I think I might actually trim it up, which is something I'd never considered doing. I always thought that more fat was more flavour, but I didn't realise that there was different types of fat, which is my my ignorance. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah, I think it was interesting, like the connective tissue, different ways that the grain's running, so that you can cook something that looks incredible, but if you've got two grains running two different ways and there's a big piece of silver, uh, silver skin in the middle of there, it can end up yeah, almost not being as good as what you think is going to be. Like some stuff, some parts of the cooks will cook at different times. Yeah, right? different so some speeds. Some bits will like break up and then other bits will be... Yeah, cause so we'll just explain quite that quick. again. So, um, yeah, we're saying that when you've got the... the the, the, I can't remember what. I think we were looking at the feather. We were looking at the feather, feather earlier. Yeah. Where's Martin? Oh, it was the a chuck. chuck. Yeah. yeah. And different parts of the chuck will cook at different times. So if you put it in it as one, like some bits will be like falling to pieces, and then some bits will be big chunks still. And yeah, it was just. Yeah, like and chewy. And if there's parts standing. of that that if you cut it out as well, you've got bits of it that you can eat almost like a sirloin steak. And then there's other bits of it that just need to be slower cooked. Mm -hmm. And it's again going back to the same thing of making the carcass more valuable. And so I'll keep on coming back. Listen, how do we get, you know, so we've had a great day here, some chefs, some industry person. How do we and get that message out wider and wider to a bigger audience? Well, hopefully, you know, we're doing stuff on social media. That's definitely one element. And the amount of people who use social media who also maybe can't get to a local farm shop or butcher or can't get to a local farm can still pick up tips or kind of little tricks that they can do or you know sourcing ideas um, because I think sometimes we take for granted as Charlotte said that yeah. we just have 
a whole lamb or a whole uh, half a side of beef or you know a pig in the freezer people we take it for granted that we can go and get a variety of cuts just at the drop of a hat so I think potentially we need to be understanding as farmers that there's sometimes reasons why consumers aren't always buying what we want them to buy or what we expect them to buy and um, but there's still there's always going to be dots to join up and we're just doing a small so, part so of do you that. think you've got a bit more better understanding of what consumers want or might need or you know, and how you can um, you know feed into that I think I think consumers yeah. want things that are quick and easy to do like I cook my steaks now in the air fryer and everyone's <laughs> been laughing at that all day but like yeah a little bit of salt and pepper You've on them pie in the air fryer it was a disaster oh, it all fell <laughs> stop oh it oh well i just word. i was in a you rush and i, I thought it'd be <laughs> quick and then it all fell through the holes and it, oh, I mean, it was awful and i was in it was such a waste of mince <laughs> it was terrible mark have we got another question in from from the audience So from Rob Higgins, should we stop exporting? Because we don't utilise all well, of I the think animal. That's one important thing that we learned when we went to Anuga as well was that we as British people consume certain parts of an animal. And when we think about exports, we often think that we're exporting a whole carcass and we're importing whole carcass. We're actually we're eating the cuts that we consume in this country. But there's other parts of the a cut farm, or farm, other parts of the animal that we don't consume, so like fifth quarter products that might awful. go elsewhere and offal. And I think it's, it, we talked um, about pork, for example, and I think there's so 5.6 million pigs in the country, which obviously produce about 11 million pork loins. But in Britain, we eat 25 million pork loins. And at some point, we've got to bring that in. But we might be exporting something else in place of that. They're like trotters that we're not going to consume over here. And it's, it's a valuable market. <laughs> what was it? So, it's, it's something, I don't think it's something we should Pizzles. do because it's, it's important about in. knowing what exactly it is that we are importing and exporting. It's not quite as simple as whole carcass imports and exports. Uh, and actually those yeah. relationships have taken such a long time to build with other countries that if we suddenly said, oh, well, we're, not going to, we're not going to export until, you know, we've kind of, we're fine domestically or whatever. How, I, I mean, I dread to think how long it would take to build up those relationships back again with, with, other, with mm -hmm. other countries. And it is obviously a, something which yeah. AHDB do so much, I don't, something that we've talked about before, yeah, we, we just didn't realise. And I think by pulling it in as well, you'd end up with a surplus, so you lower your prices. It, it, the whole thing is just a big, that would be a very much a 2D solution to a 3D yeah. problem, and it just doesn't work like that. I think as well, we mentioned earlier how British beef is seen as this like real quality product across the whole world. And if we take that away from other parts of the world, they are going to go elsewhere. And once they go somewhere else and they get a product that suits their system, they're not going to come back to us just because we've pulled it. Um, and, yeah, so we, we did a whole uh, agri-leader circle, which mm. you can uh, watch back on. Um, what were they called, one. Charlotte? <laughs> Pizzles from Peking. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so go and have a watch of that. And there's a, um, you know, a lot of information. It was really enlightening, that, yeah, whole, was. that whole thing about us and what we do for exports and how where it goes any more questions there mark from nothing from uh coming in so a bit from from what you've learned today and you know so do you think some that that being at the front end of the trends and you know some new innovative ideas how can we help drive you know beef consumption whether it's here in britain hopefully but also you know and elsewhere but especially in concentrating on britain well we already put ourselves out there on a daily basis and yes we might not be stood in front of a grill cooking every day but with armed with any information it's got to be better than being armed with none and i just think yeah definitely farmers have a long way to go to understanding their own systems before we start mm -hmm. So, and and you know, innovative products, innovative cuts, innovative, you know, th those kind of trends. You talked about some quick, easy. What other ideas can, can you know, the industry do, and the wider industry so, to help push on, you know, some uh, British consumption, uh, beef consumption? I think we just, like, chipping it. We have to keep chipping away at the edges because it it's a difficult thing. You're not going to just go in there and blow it wide open from the, from the inside because if we could do that, we would just go in and do that, wouldn't we? We have to keep chipping away at the edges. And events like this are, are really good at find, getting people involved who have perhaps never been on a farm before. They might be cooking British produce, but they don't know where it comes from. And it's just great to get them in, get them to see the story behind it, and then they can take that away, 
put it in their menus. We, we saw on the insights that it's really important what goes on a menu from a, a, a text point of view and what people can read. And all of that thing, it helps build the story then with the consumer who then go away and it just can, keeps, it's like a snowball effect, it keeps getting further and further astream. Yeah, we're going to say that like the, the research that AHDB were doing on future trends and what people were thinking were popular was, uh, was highlighted in the insights. Yeah. talk that we had, uh, weren't they? So it was uh, like more experiential yeah. dining. I was just about to say, it's even down to kind of how the restaurant's set up and if you get something else beyond the food when you get there, which seems kind of crazy for us mm. as produ producing food to say, well, how is that not the star, the star of the, the evening or, or the meal? Um, but actually, there's a, there's a massive experience, a whole how do you feel when you've left? And actually, as farmers, we're relying on, on the people further down the chain to do that bit, yeah, that to push bit our yeah. product, um, and I think it's it's probably made me realise that almost yes, our job might be might be done when when the animal leaves the farm, um, but there's so many other people that we need help from. You know, we can't just do a good job. We need to get everybody else on board as well. And it's building those relationships, yeah. yeah. So in a minute, I'm going to ask you what's your one take-home message from what you've seen or learned today, <laughs> um, or you know something you might do differently on farm. But before that, and Carl, if you can come and tell us a little bit more about and this great industry initiative that is Great British Beef Week, um, how it got kicked off and, and how people can get involved, please. Yeah, so uh, Great British Beef Week uh, started, well, we're running into our 14th year now. It was started by uh, two West Country farmers, which was uh, Jilly Greed and uh, Minette Batters, who quickly enlisted uh, a raft of other lady farmers passionate about beef farming uh, Anna Blumfield being one here at Deersbrook Farm and why we're uh, being kindly hosted at this farm. Uh, it's a really great way to showcase the world of what we do as British agriculture, how we work with nature, how we keep animals in great welfare conditions and actually how we actually produce beef fit to feed the nation. Uh, when uh, we wrap this up, and when I usually wrap a day up, I usually say, there's a farmer, there's a butcher, there's a chef. Who has the most important part in this whole chain? But actually, it needs to be a completely integrated system, because if one part lets it down, actually the experience for the consumer is not great at all. So we need to really work hard at pulling that industry together and really featuring so that we can showcase that right the way to the world. Uh, you can get involved by uh, going on social media, following all these lovely people through the week, uh, following lots of other people, especially AHDB and Ladies in Beef. Uh, and when you post your photographs of your beef dishes, please tag in hashtag GBBW24. Excellent, Carl, and well done on a brilliant day today. And the feedbacks have been amazing from everybody that was here. So thank you very, thank uh, you very much. Well, thank you very much. Right. So the question of send, you know, your one take-home message from today. Um, Charlotte and I are better at cooking than uh, yes, than I Charles. completely yes. agree. And are you going to hear <laughs> I that <have> for <laughs> myself? <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. We've not tasted it yet. But. <laughs> If Roy is watching this. If I could this. see yours through all of that barbecue sauce, I might, you know, <laughs> consider it. So, Roy, if you're watching this. No, um, don't say that. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> don't get any ideas. I'm still saying rubbish. <laughs> One take-home message. Um, it was very interesting to see somebody else's system and just have a walk around someone else's farm. I think when you're down a lane on your own, you very often get quite tunnel visioned into what you're doing, what you're trying to get to, your own goals. And I think it's just nice to be able to step back for even just a day and just have a look at the broader picture and realise there's other people doing different things to you with the same goal, which is still producing you know, meat at the end of the day. Excellent, working together. Yeah, I think uh, the insight for me was just seeing that everything we're doing from the statistics that we saw earlier on is, is working and what the HDV are doing, what we're doing as farmers, as people on social media, just keep chipping away at it and it is making a difference and we, we are getting somewhere and it might seem like a long, hard slog at times, but it, it is working. We just need to keep arming ourselves, beating against that misinformation and, and, and keep pushing forward, really. I was just loving that like the vegan food is on the down <laughs> and going up. But um no, I like that the the innovation in like the butchering world. Because I, I just thought, you know, you 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 cut an animal down like this, you get this steak, that steak and another. And then it's just nice to see that like there's different things that can be done. 
So that was that was good. That You've got to keep on looking at different things yeah, and, yeah. and innovate. So different trends and things. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much, uh, of course, to everybody that joined in at home. You, the guys that really make it worthwhile. But there's a lot of thank yous. First of all, thank you to our four farmers in the room. Uh, a massive thank you to our uh, chefs, uh, Ben and Neil Martin, and for the butchery demonstration. Carl for putting t t uh, all of this together and all the people that helped. Carl, there's a b big team and uh, behind that, Marks and Ben, all of those guys, thank you very much. But of course, a massive thank you to Anna for hosting it and everybody else here. So thank you very much.